everything that you mentioned, yeah. you've taken your life in your hand. Where does that spirit come from with you? I guess, you know, I've always wanted to have my own business. Like I've always felt like I'm going to start my own business and I'm going to work for myself and so forth. Um, but I think when it really hit home to me was as I'm going to Berkeley, I do uh, an internship uh, at Intel, right? The guy, you know, the company that makes all the chips and, and pretty much all the computers. Biggest, biggest chip company in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I move out to, to Folsom, California, and I was out there for eight months, you know, working for Intel programming while I was still going to school. Like, you know, I took a break from school and did that. And I got to see corporate life at the highest level. Like, this is one of the biggest corporations in the world. Correct. And I'm working at one of their main offices, and I have a manager who's like a middle manager, and I'm seeing his progression in terms of his career and he had been there like 10 years and he wasn't broke but he wasn't rich by by any stretch of the imagination you know he had a wife and he had a modest house and you know I, i'm looking at this going and this is a smart guy like this is not a this is not a just a just a stupid guy that isn't you know worthy of, of moving up the ranks he was a very very smart guy but I'm seeing him and I'm like, okay, so if this guy here has been working for the company 10 years and this is where he's at, if I joined a company like this, after 10 years, I'll probably be in a similar position. So it, it's, it doesn't really seem like this is the corporate How old life. How you at this time, Vlad? Uh, 20, 21. 20? So you're, you're in your early 20s. 20, yeah. You know, in your early 20s, we're all, we're, we're immortal. We, we think we're going to live forever. We think right. we can accomplish anything. Yeah. At that moment, I'm assuming you're in a 20-year-old mind state like, I can't go through this. When I'm 30, you know, I'm not going to yeah. be making a lot of money. Yeah, like, I'm like, I'm not going to be president of intel i'm not going to be a vice president i'm not going to be making millions here uh i i just you know I'm, I'm planning things out i mean even going to berkeley was me planning things out you know getting a computer science degree was planning things out i could have just been a history major and had a very easy time you know with easy classes mm -hmm. you know the math classes i had and programming classes i had to take was like Oof, it was it was a rough time. It was it was rough. I'm not one of these like super geniuses like some of my classmates where you know they just breeze through it. Like it was rough. So pardon me. <clears throat> so yeah, I just knew at that point that being at a big corporation like that, I wasn't gonna accomplish my goals, my life goals. So as I graduated, I had a, an offer from Intel. I also had a, an offer from this company called Sun Microsystems, which was a big hardware maker at the time. Um, but I, I got a job. I got a, a bigger offer from a startup company called NetObjects, uh, and they offered me. I remember I, I was making it was like sixty five thousand a year plus a five thousand dollar signing bonus. My first year out of college as a twenty three year old, which was pretty good at the time. You, you great. Nineteen ninety six dollars on top of that, so it was probably equivalent to like maybe a hundred thousand this, you know, in 2020. And, and I worked for them for like a year. And, um, I just realized that I, I'm not a great employee. Like I'm just not, I'm just not good being part of this team, part of a team with a boss and being kind of low on the totem pole and, and so forth. It just, it just wasn't my thing. And, uh, so after a year, you know, it takes a year to get a certain number of stock options. So, you know, you're 25% of your stock options. I say exactly a year, I quit. I got my stock options, which I think were ended up being worthless anyways because the company went out of business. Um, I, 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 I tried to be a, a contract, you know, I became a contractor. So I would essentially work for companies as a programmer for about a year, but on a contract basis, which meant I was now making like 50 bucks an hour or, or 75 bucks an hour, which was equivalent to like 100, 150,000 a year. Um, and now the money's starting to come in 
but I'm like, I'm not really into programming like that. Like sitting in front of a computer and writing code all day long just isn't, isn't really my thing. And where I was, um, the company I was contracting for was in a plaza in, in Emeryville, California with another company called Ask Jeeves. Um, you know, ask.com. It, it, it was a company that was on its way to becoming public, mm -hmm. right? It was on, on its way to becoming a big, a big company. And I became cool with the CEO or the C, the founder and CEO of the company, C, CTO, I think. And um, he was looking to hire people. So I'm like, well, shit, I could help you. I could help you find some of these people. And recruiters make something like 20% of the person's first year salary. So if I hire, you know, a senior level engineer and their salary is a hundred thousand the first year, my commission is 20,000. So, and I, and I started to hire and I'm hiring people like this and I'm like, shit, 20,000 a pop, 15,000 a pop, 10,000 a pop, you know, and you're hiring multiple people a month sometimes. And now you're working with other companies. And I remember I'm like, all right, I got enough money to last me about six months from from this from these contracting gigs and whatever else I saved. Let me go do recruiting full time. You know, I I launched a company called Giga Staff, and um, I said, okay, if it doesn't work out, I'll go back to programming again. But it it worked out. So so now I'm I'm kind of in a whole new thing. And now I actually have my own company. Now I'm, I got an office and I start hiring people, and and everything is is going well. And and you got to think this was like 1999, um, going into 2000. And the dot com market is on fire. Mm -hmm. Come going public, you know, as Jeeves go, goes public, I, I get stock options in that, which is a nice check. And, and all these other companies are getting all this funding because the internet is a new thing and everyone is going crazy. And, and all these um, uh, uh, companies are investing and giving millions of dollars. And you get you get a couple, you know, when you get a couple million dollars in in, in seed funding, you have to hire as, as fast as you can. So they work with people like me because, you know, I, once again, me being a programmer, I could hire other programmers because I understand what to look for and I understand how to talk to the managers. Whereas a typical recruiter has no idea what, what, what they're doing in this regard. So they're, they would send, send candidates that made no sense. Whereas with me, it's like, okay, one engineer talking to another engineer, this is this, this works out better. So I'm doing this and the money's rolling in and, and it's all good. And then out of nowhere, the dot-com crash happens. And all the companies I was, I was working with, they all start going out of business. Or if they don't go out of business, they, they definitely stop hiring. So I kind of had this decision of, okay, do I stay with the recruiting during what, what's about to be a very rough time? You know, and I just bought a half million dollar house in the Oakland Hills and I had expenses and so forth. Or do I say, fuck it, this was a nice run. I'm going to pursue one of my real passions, which is music, because I kind of have this time that my business is not, nothing's really happening. And, and sometimes I think like I, I had friends who were doing the same type of thing. They stuck it out during this downtime because, listen, I mean, the Internet came, you know, came back. You know, right. look at yeah. the, the, the internet these days. They stuck it out and their companies, you know, weathered the storm and, and it did well overall. And I was thinking like, well, you know, if I stayed with it, what would have happened? Would I have grown this big recruiting company or not? You know, who knows? But I had this passion to do music and I felt like I had this time in my life where I could do it and at least try it out. And if it doesn't work out, then I could always go back to recruiting. I could always go back to, to programming. I have, I have plan B's and C's. But... You know, with that, I moved to New York to try to do the music thing. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.